Roger Stone joins us primarily as a former member of the political consulting term uh, firm Black, Manafort and Stone, the Manafort being Paul, the Stone being Roger. It's great to have you on again. Um, so, Roger, as, as Paul Manafort's trial unfolds, I'm just wondering how do you think it's looking for him at this point? Do you think he's in real trouble here? Well, first of all, with all due respect, I'm not sure I was ever his right-hand man. We were certainly partners, and he's a boyhood friend. Uh, what's amazing to me is that he got to trial at all, given the enormous pressure put on him by the special counsel to plead guilty. Uh, and I'm still perplexed as to why he has not raised the question of whether he was under uh, illegal FISA surveillance uh, uh, in this trial and in the upcoming trial. Uh, Cheryl Atkinson, the New York Times, many others have reported that he was, uh, but the, the government does not agree to that in discovery, and Manafort's team have not uh, raised it. Beyond that, I'm not following every, uh, every word of the trial, but uh, the drama is obvious. Uh, and I think the, uh, perhaps the mistake that people are looking at uh, is that they are viewing Rick Gates and Paul Manafort m monolithically. And I think uh, that that's an error in trying to figure out what has happened here. How, how do you mean monolithically? Because obviously Rick Gates was a close associate of his and seemed to have been deeply involved in you know, setting up uh, these these overseas bank accounts uh, and seems to have wide knowledge. Well, there's, there's no question, there's no question that, that, look, I don't know Mr. Gates very well, but I know a great deal about him. Uh, and there's no question that he was handling the logistics of the business he was doing with Paul Manafort. But because of Manafort's economic model, I think that Gates was uh, squeezed financially, and I think he had clients of his own, and business activities of his own. I assume that he has told the government about this, but I don't know what he has disclosed to them. Uh, when he said that he had embezzled $400,000, I had heard that numbers were much larger than that. Uh, so uh, I think he has to be viewed not as a, a joined a Manafort at the hip, but with his own agenda uh, and his own issues. He certainly has, uh, I mean, his own agenda, but one can't deny his inner knowledge of Manafort's affairs, correct? Uh, I believe that to be true. Uh, but the other, at the same time, what does Manafort know about Gates' affairs? Uh, remember, this uh, investigation is supposed to be about Russian uh, collusion, yet none of the charges against Manafort, uh, or Gates for that matter, thus far, uh, regard that particular issue. The, 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 the investigation, though, is not just about Russian collusion or, or allegations of Russian collusion. It's also about any involvement uh, in Russia attempting to meddle or attack the United States during the, the 2016 election and anything that came out of that. I mean, they're, they're, they have a pretty broad mandate. The, uh, of that, there is no question. And, and while Mr. Mueller has certainly provided evidence of Russian meddling, it has largely been ham-handed, ineffective, uh, and not had much impact on the results, in my opinion. He has yet to prove uh, actual Russian collusion between the Trump campaign or Trump associates or Trump family members uh, with the Russian state. Uh, we've talked about that before. I know of no evidence uh, of it. Uh, I don't think Mr. Mueller has proven that case yet. The, the last time uh, we spoke, uh, I obviously asked you about whether or not you'd been contacted by, by the Mueller investigation. At this point, have you been asked to appear before the special counsel's team? Uh, I have not, but it has been publicly reported that they have uh, interviewed and subpoenaed a number of my associates. I know that there exists nowhere evidence of Russian collusion or WikiLeaks collaboration or any nonsense pertaining to John Podesta's email. Uh, but I'm also mindful of any prosecutor's ability to squeeze underlings to get them to compose testimony against a bigger fish. I have not been uh, contacted by the special counsel's office. I've made it abundantly clear that there's no circumstances under which I would testify against the president. I would not rule out cooperating uh, if they think I could be helpful in some area. Uh, but beyond that, um, I, I have not spoken to them. Just can I ask you, just on a personal level, I mean, what does it feel like to have this, I don't know if it's fair to say a cloud, but certainly the concern about an indictment, um, you know, when you see 
associates of yours, people you have been involved in, in business with and, and done business with, being called in. Uh, you now have uh, this, uh, this woman who had done some work for you uh, going to be testifying in front of, uh, in front of a grand jury, Kristen Davis. Um, she's expected to appear on Friday. Just on a personal level, does it, does it worry you? I mean, does it, do you lose sleep over this? Uh, no, actually, I don't. Kristen Davis is a, a brilliant woman, a friend of mine, someone who has made mistakes and, and uh, has paid her debt to society. She is now a single parent. I'm the godfather to her son, Carter Stone Davis, and I love that boy. Uh, she's certainly not engaged in any illegal activities today. She's trying to launch a cosmetology business. She knows of no uh, Russian collusion or WikiLeaks collaboration or any other illegal activity on my part in connection with the presidential election or otherwise. And she's going to talk to the prosecutors uh, voluntarily. She's not looking for a media circus in her life. Uh, she is uh, going to tell the truth. Of that, I am certain. It, it seems, though, what they are interested in, again, we don't, I, I mean, I don't know this, but the only thing that uh, just from the outside, it would seem that they would be interested in is any knowledge she would have of your schedule, your email communications, um, any emails you exchange with, with other people, since she had a role in... I mean, would she know about that? Would she know of what exactly was she, work she, was she doing for you? Well, in the, in the time period uh, that's most under focus, 2015 and 2016, she was not working for me. She uh, came back to work for me in January of 17, uh, uh, although I think I paid her in December of 2016. Uh, but I believe that my emails have been thoroughly uh, reviewed by the special counsel uh, under a FISA warrant or some other warrant, uh, and there is no evidence of Russian collusion or WikiLeaks collaboration. Uh, so um, I, I, I don't believe she possesses any knowledge about this area. Earlier today, WikiLeaks said that the Senate Intelligence Committee has asked Julian Assange to appear for a closed interview on 2016 election meddling at a mutually agreeable time and location. Obviously, not clear if or when that would even take place. Uh, I'm wondering what you think about that possibility. Well, uh, I think it would be a positive development. Look, this is a tremendously expensive process uh, to be under the scrutiny of a, of a uh, all-powerful federal prosecutor. I'm being sued by the Democratic National Committee. Uh, and in that lawsuit, whether or not the Russians hacked the DNC is a central question. The indictment announced by Mr. Mueller claims uh, that they did, but that's an indictment, not a conviction in a court of law. Uh, Mr. Assange would have information regarding this that he might be able to illuminate the American people uh, regarding. So I think his testimony would be a positive thing. Mm. Roger Stone, I appreciate your time. Thank you.